cloud. All nice, right. dude. Recording in progress, brother. All right, I'll, I'll give us the intro. Welcome to the Seven Dollar Podcast. Ruff, ruff, meow, meow. We're talking about pets. I did no research today because I knew you were on the computer, and uh, just whatever we look up is whatever we look up. So yeah, I'll, this, like that, the other. I'll take it. Yeah, welcome to the seven dollar podcast, everybody. I'm your your friendly neighborhood seven dollar Zordon Paul Matlock, and it's me, the host with the most, Kyle Matlock. Hey yo, yo. excuse my voice, I've been ill. So if I start corfing, it is um I have man flu. Just leave it at that. You still there? I'm still here. Got real quiet. You know we're, we're recording a podcast. You know right? Yeah, I was pulling up some documents for uh, okay. the podcast. Okay, you got a vamp a little man. You got a vamp. So how, how are you, it? man? How was your day? Um, it's been good. Uh, I've been just sick, just laying around. Uh, just doped up on cough medicine. Hell yeah! Getting ready for this Easter weekend. Getting ready to be an Easter weekend man. Uh, yeah, yeah. Being an Eastero. So yeah, how's how's you how's that been over there? Deep in your underground base deep in the underground base where i do all the podcast editing it's been good just been chilling getting ready for easter nice dude getting, nice getting it all done very good <laughs> had a job oh, interview God. today that was pretty cool yeah so <clears throat> you gotta hire the man that's if, right. you're, if, if you're an employer and you're watching this higher pile, that's right. Button. I just want to give a disclaimer. If there's a lot of dorgs porking and frogs croaking, um, giant bugs attacking me. <laughs> oh, God, what <laughs> you know, <laughs> normally I wouldn't be freaking out, but I'm like, I can't see that well. Yeah. <laughs> So like I don't know what's landing on me. You don't know what's getting you. Yeah, probably some and, sort of like hummingbird that drinks blood. Cool. Or just a June bug, but they're prickly and I don't like that. Yeah, it freaks me out too. Yeah, but can't can't be in the house for the recording because the Wi Fi won't will disconnect. Oh no! And then it'll be just here. sitting here. living in. Living in my boonie, living out here in the way station, <laughs> deep space nine. I I I can I feel like I'm the Martian. I'm just here by myself a lot, making poo potatoes. Yeah, dude. There you go. Definitely making poo. <laughs> <laughs> Yikes! <laughs> just eating and digesting and moving on. There you go. Taking my vitamins, so I'm immune to everything. That's right. Nothing can get you. That's right. Unless it's a big, giant, flying bug. And then it'll definitely get you. Hell yeah. So dang, we everybody is listening. Um, you can make sure you like, comment, subscribe, share the podcast. You know, do all the things. Yeah, all the obligatory YouTube things. Please do all of that. Yeah, and much appreciated. This week, we'll give everyone a break. You got to tell two friends about the podcast instead of three. Yeah. We don't have Stephen Blakely with us, so. Yeah. Next time, next time. Oh, or whenever he can make it. <laughs> yeah. Whenever he wants to talk to us about Warhammer some more. Oh, oh fun. Oh, yeah. I'm still confused about from from the first talk. Yeah, I think that I'm still trying to figure that out as well. Yeah. To all our listeners, write in if it confused you, because <laughs> it definitely nice. rolled over our heads. 
there was a lot of information and not, not a lot of time. Yeah, it was a lot of, it was like drinking from the fire hose in that one. There you go. I feel like I learned a lot. Can you hear this dog? I cannot hear this dog. Okay. He's going off. He's going crazy over there. Going crazy. He wants to be on the podcast. Yeah, for sure. It's not the neighbor dog either. It's like a, across the way. Oh, wow. Oh, sorry. Hey, My uh, brawn fed must be kicking in. Uh-oh. It's <laughs> coming. Yeah, he'll be passing out on the... On the... That'll be good content, dude. Yeah. Man, man passes out on podcasts. So, in this, you know, in these first couple minutes, we have yet to talk about pets. Um, it's exciting, dude. Um, well, tell us about some pets. What kind of what? What do you want to say about pets? Well, golly, I just you know I thought you know with the whole TikTok trend of the sad dog song that they've got, like the sad dog video, we could chit chat about pets. All right, and you know, yeah, it'll be great. <laughs> we've awesome. got around here in my in my cabin in the woods we've got three dogs they're pretty all right two right. olds and a puppy and all yeah, right big big times in little china here in the deep underground layer that i have i just have a cat or well yeah oh so. Since time of memoriam, man has bested nature with the with the friends of his tribe, with the friendly beasts that he okay. is summoned to the fires. I have an article here I can read. That's the five most common pets. Yeah, there you go. The first one is dogs. We already addressed that dogs are pretty awesome. Yeah. Yeah. We get down with that. Next up is cats. Next one, the cat. Yeah, it's approximately approximately thirty eight point nine million American households own cats. Wow, yeah, you're part of that. I am part of that. I'm part of the the great cat contingency. Very good. Um. Next up is fish. They're the third most populous, reporting that 12.5 million households have an average of about 12 fish. Huh. 12 fish. I guess if you have, like, an, it's just, like, a lonely existence to have, like, one gold fish. Yeah. I mean, like, the average household has, like, a bigger tank and has 12 fish in it. Yeah. Our cousin had piranhas. That's pretty cool. It's pretty lit. He put his, he put his mortal enemies in there. Yeah. I think somebody, like, I think they died one or something because somebody, like, threw a Cheeto in there to them or something. Oh, wow. They, I'll they, have to, they got I'll the have Cheeto ops. Do I? They got the Cheeto, the Cheeto ops for the piranhas. Dang, dude. They caught the... You got... Well, so fish, dog, catfish. Next up is birds. Birds. Would you ever own a bird? I would not. I feel like they smell. Or like they're really loud. Yeah. Some people like them. I think like people who have birds, they love their birds, dude. Like a big fan of the birds. I just feel like you couldn't like fly around with it or anything. Yeah. And like I would feel bad for like trapping in a cage. Yeah. I mean like the fish is one thing. Cause that's like don't even know. Yeah. That's like their little ecosystem. Yeah, like a bird's like I I need to be in the sky. What's going on? Like I need to be like fly, fly free, fly yeah. high, soar, be soar like a bird amongst the clouds. The clouds. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Let's see. Up next is rabbits. Rabbits. Dang, dude, that's number four. Yeah. That, I honestly feel like where are all the rabbit owners? I don't know any. There are about 6.2 million rabbits in 19 million homes. So huh. they kind of travel around. I guess like 
dispersed amongst the country. That's not. Yeah. No, statistically, that's not that many people. I actually saw a TikTok. I wish we there was a way we could like play it on the thing, but it's like called a continental giant or something. And then they're like four foot tall, not four foot tall, but like four foot long rabbits. Wow! And like this English lady is like, they've got these giant rabbits. They take a little bit like to get used to, but they're all right. So they have. She has them as a, a pet. Yeah, she like raises like these ginormo rabbits. Can you eat them? I don't know. <laughs> I think something that big, it's like, you know, it's like eating your dog. Well, I mean, like, like, people eat cow, and cows are big. Yeah, but, yeah, it's like different. All right. It's different, dude. If you're eating your pet rabbit, go ahead and write in. Let us know. <laughs> yeah. Jeez. Like, if, if you, if you want to, I guess they name cows. And stuff. I don't know. Maybe if, if I like, you know, maybe if we taste it and it, maybe I just haven't eaten it, so I don't think it's you know, I wouldn't want to eat it, eat my pets. But I always think like like, if the world was ending and we, there was like a scarcity of food, I think I'd eat my pets. I think so. <laughs> like only in like the direst of situation. Like, like if they ran out of food and I couldn't feed them, or like, you're notorious for having wiener dogs, though. So you would like spit roast it or what? Yeah. I mean, get a nice, get a nice like a, uh, like shawarma cut of a of a wiener. I dog. guess it depends on the situation, though, because like, honestly, there's not that much of them to eat. Like there. Cause I don't feed them. I don't make. I don't get them super fat. Like my weenie dogs are. They're all supposed to be skinny because they're backs. So they're all. They're all like a healthy weight, but there's not much meat to them. I mean, so like I guess you'd be eating the muscle. I guess, yeah. Just slow. Just cook them real slow. But then again, like like dogs and stuff. I don't know. You would think, like, I am legend, like, oh, my dog will help me, like, survive. Yeah. Like, a lot of my dogs, they they wouldn't know what to do. They're like, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I think out of all the dogs we've ever owned, I think only really one of them was worthwhile to keep. Like, that would be a good survivalist. Yeah. Yeah. And... She lived out in the backyard, and she could hunt. Yeah, so, like we didn't have to worry about feeding her. She had that. <laughs> she had that dog in her. She had that. She had that dog in it. She got that dog in her. That dog in her. Hell yeah! So, yeah, I saw a, a video about it. Could have been fake too, but they were like big old giant rabbits. Give it a Google. Look it up. Okay. What are they called? Like uh, continental giant rabbits or something like that. We're looking it up, everybody. Or, yeah, we're looking it up. Damn. See if it. Don't describe what the what the. I'll just hold it up to the screen. Okay. Oh. Here's this lady with her rabbit. Yeah, it's a big one, huh? Yeah. They're all yeah. about that size. Yeah. Get, is there like a wiki page we can read about it? I guess. I can read it. I would put it on a leash and walk it around. The continental giant. <laughs> Gina. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Nice, dude, nice. The continental giant, also known as the German giant, <clears throat> is a very large breed of rabbit, which was originally bred for meat. So they were bred to be eaten. Oh, okay, cool. See? Look, what do I know? Yeah, <laughs> tasty looking rabbit, dude. You want uh, to guess 
it's recognized by the British Rabbit Council in two categories, colored and white, <clears throat> but it is not recognized as a breed by the American Rabbit Breeders Association. Dang. So the ARBA does not recognize it. <laughs> the ARBA? The dang old ARBA. I mean, but it was, if it was RBs, then it would be, it would be maybe, a sandwich. It'd be, uh, maybe that's what they make their meat out of at RBs. <laughs> Very good. The continental giant air. We've got the meats. We've got the rabbit. My voice is all messed up. My God, I have a very dulcet tone. Hello. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Maybe we need to record some commercials tonight so you can. Yeah. Get some voice actor work. There you go. Yeah. Uh, that would be my good side hustle. We're getting on a tangent. We're going to talk about pets. We're talking Pet. about pets. The continental giant rabbit. That gum dangle. Okay, so that was number four. What's number five? I think that Rounding was number five. The rabbit? Yeah. Dog, cat, Dog, cat fish, bird. bird. Oh, yeah, rabbit. Oh, that's a, that was such a good segue, dude. We're talking about number five is a rabbit. And then I looked up, I learned about a giant, a German giant rabbit, dude. There you go. That it can be used for meat. You can eat it. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Um, I also found a found out that you can own little like pygmy goats. And those are they're actually very loving. Really? Yeah. Where'd you find I'm that just, out? I'm just, you know, I spend my days instead of doing something productive with my time, like, you know, learning uh braille or reading, or like rather listening to audiobooks. I um, I just scroll. I have brain rot, and I scroll on TikTok, and I it was like the AI voice, like these are five, these are three types of goats that all you can own. Would you own a goat? I'm like, yeah, dude. Let me get some of that goat loving. Give me some of that. Give me the goat. Give me some of that goat settles. Goat me up. Getting goat. I mean, if it were up to me, I think I would have like a, like a million pets. Even though I complain about, I would complain about all of them. Every single one of them. That's how you show yeah. your love towards your pets. Yeah, I've got the same affliction that Grandma has. Like, she, you know, complains about the animals, but they all love her. They all love, they like, like, like our great grandmother. Bless her. She's ninety. She doesn't like dogs, but every dog she meets loves her. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> so, it's a good little buddy comedy kind of situation whenever she's over here. Um, she's always, like, asked if the dogs, like, poop in the house and stuff. Like, no, they're trained. Like, she's like, wow. Wow, she's blown away. Yeah. She's like, she... Every time she pets one of the dogs, she goes and washes her hands. I don't blame her. <laughs> like they're inside dogs. I'd be like washing your hands after every time, like running your hand through your hair. Yeah. Like they, I think they get bathed more regularly than I do sometimes. That's either a, a really well kept dog or just something about my really bad mental health sometimes. Yeah. I've got a list of the top 20 dogs. Oh, yeah. Let's talk about him. Let's see. We're going to start at 20, starting with the Shih Tzu. Oh, yeah. That white dog with some shit in its face. Yeah. Some Shih Tzu action. Yeah. What a. Does this, this, like, give a little, spe- like, a little, like, blurb about it, or is it just a list? No, this is just the American Kennel Club list. Oh, okay. You know, I don't, I don't think I'd own a Shih Tzu. You don't know any Shih Tzu action? Yeah, I think... Yeah, I can't think of any Shih Tzus I've ever known, either. They're very lovey-dovey. Good with children. Good with other dogs. That's good. What, did you look that up? What does it say? It's, uh, I looked it up. 
Oh. Cool. Probably a good apartment dog. The lion dog. Is that number two? The... Pronounced shed zoo in the West or sheet zoo. And then the Chinese say Scherzer. They Scherzer, yeah. Scherzer, yeah. I thought they were little. They are little. They just look like lions or what? They have like the long manes. So they have like the. Let me see if I can get it to focus in here. Nope. There it is. <laughs> Let's see. Let me see if I can see this. You know what a Shih Tzu is. Yeah. I don't know. I kind of just wanted to have my monocle in on the pod. Wow. It's blurry still. Yeah, everything's blurry for me, dog. Okay, I see. Yeah. Rad. And this is going to make good podcast content, dude. Yeah. <laughs> this is why we're primarily an audio podcast. Yeah, it'll be fine. All right. Um, next up what? next up is the miniature sna- schnauzer. Oh, ah, Jay owns the schnauzer. Wow. Is it a miniature schnauzer though? Uh I don't know. I just like schnauzers because they have a mustache. That's what I like. That's why I like schnauzers. They're Dang. not as good with other dogs as the Shih Tzu, but Dang. affectionate with the family and good with young children. That's good. good Top notch schnauzers. Yeah. Number eighteen is the Cavalier King Charles. The Cavalier King Charles Spaniels. Hmm. Isn't isn't that like Lady from Lady and the Tramp? Yeah. Those are cute dogs. Very good. For the uh, audio, for the audios, we're showing one. I know what they look like. Are you just showing the... Showing for the people. Oh, for the hente. You want to know those? You know. Guys, take a gander. Yeah. Very good. Next up is the Doberman Pinsir. Really? Yeah. I always think they're the Resident Evil dogs. I mean, they're really, I mean, in Resident Evil, they are mean, but they are good with kids and affectionate with their family. Yeah. See, they just, if they don't have skin, that's when they're mean. Yeah. And I, I, I too would be mean if I was, didn't have any skin, so. Yeah. After Doberman Pinsers for number 16 is Great Danes. Dang. I used to know some guys that they had two Great Danes. Wow. And they're awesome. Fred and Gaia. All right. Number 15, coming up with the Australian Shepherds. Word. Shout out to the to the crew. That's what we got rocking around here. We got three of them over there. Yeah. Uh, number 14 is Siberian Huskies. Hey, hey, I used to have one of them. Shout out Shout to, Lucy. to Lucy. This is like the radio shout-out episode for dogs. Yeah. Just shout-out. Shout-out to Siberian Huskies. Yeah, good. I watched those videos on TikTok. They're like, how my husky get mad at me this week. And, you know, honestly, um, it's all very accurate. <laughs> after the huskies is number 13 for pembroke welsh corgis oh yeah so i used after, to definitely want a, a welsh pembroke i feel like they they should i thought they would be ranked higher on the list well they have had a lot of health issues eh, it doesn't really matter they get they they can get bad backs because they're longer and they have hip dysplasia and stuff and they can be grumpy. They can be grouchy. I just figured everyone's like, that's like the internet dog as a corgi. Yeah. 
Well, yeah, and their butts float and they're cute, but that's why they they rank where they do. But heck yeah, yeah, yeah. After corgis, we've got number twelve. Is I always say this wrong, but dash hound, dash dashuns. The the freaking weans, dude. The dachshund. Yeah. That's right. Dachshund. Dach- there you go. That's how you say that. Yeah. I'm a ride or die for the weenie dog. Number 12. Yeah, yeah. That's that's about accurate. They have, they have bad they can get bad backs and they always have bad breath if you don't. They can put stuff in their water though. Their teeth they have teeth problems. Wow. And they're super food motivated. And they also get really jealous. Oh. I feel like I'm always saying like all the bad stuff, but like they're good. They're really. I stand by the weenie dogs. That's, that's my jam. I feel like I just feel like I, you know, spiritually and physically, I am shaped like a weenie dog. <laughs> there you go. They're good little dorgs. Dorg. My favorite weenie dog I ever had was named Rosie. Shout out. R.I.P. To- R.I.P. to the goat. Pour one out for Rosie. Pour one out for Rosie, dude. Um, after Dachshunds, we have uh, we have Boxers. Hey, that's number eleven. Is Boxers? That's cool. Um, who do I do? I know any Boxers? No, but I would. I mean, I wouldn't be against owning one. They're active, bright, and fun-loving. Kind of derpy. Very good. They need lots of mental stimulation. Yeah. If I lived on like a couple acres, I'd get a boxer. Here you go. After boxers, this is the top ten we're breaking into now. Okay. Uh, number ten is Yorkshire Terrier. Aren't those? Isn't that the white dog with shit on its eye? Uh, or yeah, those shit. It's like the Yorkshire Terriers are like uh, like from H three, like Ethan Klein's dog. Mm. Okay. Like the little. Gotcha. I feel like they always stink. I don't know. Maybe I just haven't met a good one. Maybe. I feel like they they don't stink. They look like little toys. Yeah. I feel. I always imagine them with a bow in their on their head. Yeah, that's pretty accurate. <laughs> Um, number nine is the German short-haired pointer. I can't say I even know what that is. Like, know what that looks like. I got a picture of it here. Ah. Let's see. Not that I can see it that well, but. Yeah, but. Okay. Yeah, I've never known anybody to own those. But they are top ten. Yeah. That's actually number nine. Dang, dude. Missing out, I they guess. Live 10 to 12 years. <coughs> Very nice. Uh, let's see. The versatile, medium-sized German short-haired pointer is an enthusiastic gun dog of all trades. Hmm. So like a hunting dog. Okay. This next one, number eight, is kind of weird to me, but the next one up is Rottweiler. Dang, Rottweilers are pretty chill. I mean, Zeus. Yeah. The man is a legend. I just, (laughs) given their kind of bad rap, I didn't didn't think they would be number eight. Yeah. Yeah, they're pretty, like, just kind of aloof. Hello, how you doing? Yeah, like uh, Zeus, he uh, he what's chewed this? on a brick. Like, what's that? What's that whistling noise? Oh, that's the wind flying through his ears. Yeah, I'm going through his head. 
After Rottweilers, number seven is a poodle. Poodle. I always thought poodles had bad attitudes. No, no, apparently they don't. Dang. They're not well, as good with other dogs, but. Hmm. I guess. Maybe because... I'm just thinking of like Oliver and Company and the poodle now. Nah. <laughs> hey, maybe. The picture they have for the poodle is pretty funny. Yeah. I'll show the people. Show the, show the viewer. Humble viewer. If it'll load. Very good. Load. Loading. Oh, never mind. <laughs> yeah. False alarm. Do, do your own research. Yeah, just... This will get it. There we go. Very good. Poodles are very intelligent. Hmm. All right. After poodles, we've got number six. We've got beagles. Good house dog, I think, but not very good. Um, not very good apartment dogs because they're they're very talkative. All right. After beagles, we got number five bulldogs. What kind? Bulldogs. Oh. Like uh, what? Like the like the big, the big ones. Yeah, like the big like, like, wide body. Like the one that skateboards. Yeah. Yeah. Why are they always named like Tank and Zeus? I mean, cause it. it Look! Look at them. I mean, like, <laughs> I would. I don't, I'm gonna name one Tiny, or Princess. <laughs> Sounds good to me. They are after bulldogs. Number four is French bulldogs. Yeah, uh, I actually used to follow an Instagram account that had. They sold little Cuban link chains for French bulldogs. Really? Yeah. Like it was marketed for French bulldogs. And they were like actual gold. Wow. What think what? Number three. This is the top three. Here we go. Number hey. three, third spot is a golden retriever. No shock there. Yeah. They're just your classic, like, family dog, golden retriever, hanging out. Yeah. Most. I'm probably, I'm sure these top three are going to be no shot. Like, oh, yeah. This one actually is surprising for number two. Okay, what is number two? Number two is a German Shepherd. Why is that surprising? They're good guard dogs. They're Yeah, but I figured, I figured they would be a little bit more like... Kind of like Rottweiler being in the top ten, like yeah, they're more of like a not vicious, but they're more of a like working dog. Yeah, so With proper training and stuff. Maybe it's just, since this is an AKC thing, like properly trained dogs. Yeah, like is any anybody like look at Caesar Milan has this whole it's this whole thing. It's like the dog He's whisperer. Like Forty Chihuahuas. Yeah, Chihuahuas didn't even make the list, huh? No. Didn't even make the list. Dang. Um, number one. Here we go. Drum roll, please. Da -da 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 -da. This is the Labrador Retriever. Hmm. Yeah. I would have thought either the Golden Retriever or the Lab would be one or... Yeah. The Labr Labrador Retriever marks across the board. Lovey dovey, good with children, good with other dogs. Is sweet, dude. Sweet faced, lovable, lovable Labrador Retriever is one of America's most popular dog breeds year after year. They're friendly, outgoing, high spirited companions. Yeah. Yeah. They come in three different varieties, you know, the, the yellow, 
the chocolate or the black. I know a lot about labs, dude. You're lab labman. I'm a, I'm a smart guy, dude. Smart about the labs. Which one would you own, Kyle? Uh, like what color? Or any of the dorgs. Oh, uh, I think I would get a Rottweiler. Yeah. Big old. Just a big dumb idiot. <laughs> Nice. Uh, I mean, honestly, though, like, you can't go wrong getting a, a lab, though. I mean, yeah. Like, they're, like, loyal. They'll love you. They'll love your friends. You can train them to be a diabetes alert dog. Yeah. Any of the three varieties of lab, I think I would jump for. Yeah. They can get pricey, though. I know. They're well sought after. But, I mean, there's a good chance you can go get a mutt that's a lab mix. Yeah, that's true. In a pound somewhere. Yeah, Th that let's make that point now. If you're looking for a dog, go to the pound. <laughs> Always adopt. I'll stand by that. Go through a pound or a rescue. Oh yeah. I mean, not to that is always not to discount breeders, but I think if you're just. If you know what you want specifically and you know it's going to be a perfect fit, go to a breeder. But if you're just looking for like a family pet, like just go to the pound, go to the rescue. Go get you, go get you one of them street dogs. Get you one of them, one of them, one of them, one of them dogs, man. One of them, one of them out there living on the, living on the street. Yeah, dogs are great. That's why they're the number one pet for everybody to be having. Man's best friend. Yeah. I'm look I'm looking around for my cat. Yeah, she's like, no, you're recording. I'm gonna be over here. She's probably in the room sleeping on my side of the bed. <laughs> ah. He can sleep on the couch. Yeah, he can he can kick rocks. He he can go uh play Star Wars Battlefront on his switch. I'll take this side. Oh, here she is. She's like, hey, how you doing? Surprised she doesn't ever try to sit on your keyboard. The celebrity treatment here. Dun, 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 dun. I would give you a top 10 of cats, but I don't really care that much because it's not my. <laughs> yeah, this is, I think that's uh, why you don't see a lot of like the American Kennel Club for cats. You know, I'm sure it's out there. But like a lot of people are just like, yeah, I don't really care about other cats as long as it's not. I know I don't need a list because I know my cat's the best. I want to give my cat a quick plug. Follow her on, uh, on Instagram as Eve Elizabeth the third. Very good. She's on the Insta. Can we link it in the description? <laughs> yeah, I can put it in there. I mean, if if we're doing that, should we mention Tuck? Nah. Yeah. Just Eve. He's not. He's not. He's yeah. Just Eve. Shout out to Eve. The legend. The legend. All black cat. Yeah. The Bombay. Bombay. Fun fact. She's. Yeah. She's got. She. I think she's a mutt. <laughs> she she has Bombay uh tendencies, but she doesn't have the right eye color, so I think she's got some American short hair in her. Dang, dude. She got that dog in her. Got that dog. Yeah, she got a little chihuahua in there too. Yeah. So cause she likes to play fetch. Yeah. And you can whistle for her. Yeah, she'll come and we can once you whistle for her. Like we we were just talking about her and she showed up. She's like, yes, hello. Very good. What would you say the best pet you've ever owned is? I think the best pet I ever owned is a it's a tie between yeah. our dog Karen and Eve, my little cat. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's fair. Like, Karen was the family dog. 
I guess yeah. you could put it in two different categories, like best family dog, Karen. But like personally, my best dog I've ever had was either Rosie or Lucy. Yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. I think Ro- I think Lucy's still kicking around out in Alabama. Out uh, out hanging out, going to the beach. Yeah. With her original father. Very good. I still find, you know, I was still finding husky hair two years after she was rehomed. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. But yeah. Shout out to Rosie. Probably the best dog. I think she was the only of one of the weenie dogs that you actually liked. Rosie was the ultimate. She was a she was a good little lap dog. <laughs> she she was, uh she was the only dog out of all the dogs you had I liked. <laughs> Hell yeah. She used to stand she knew what the food was. <laughs> Sorry. Uh she used to stand by the pantry and like bounce and like bark every time it was dinner time. It's pretty go. great. She kept me on schedule. She's the only dog that I whatever that I've ever seen like actually sit down for dinner, wow. like not like sit, stay, eat. Like while she was eating, she'd like sit down. Very regal of her. <laughs> Very yeah. Yeah, uh, you know, she was she was a proper lady. Good God bless him. <laughs> I tried to try to make her have sweaters, but she was too long for most of them. Was a was a one of the dorgs is passing by now. I'm not gonna try to video him. I can let him in. Okay. Okay. Good. He's, I don't want the frogs to be showing up on the other. Oh, All right. Intrepid frog hunter. That's why you can't hear any of the frogs, because Arlo, the he's a year old now, but the purebred Australian shepherd we have running around here named Arlo. Yeah, he, uh, he's found out that he really wants to hunt a frog. All right. He's he's too slow for the squirrels, so he's gonna he's gonna work his way up. He's gonna start with frogs. Start with, yeah. Okay, dude. Go ahead. Yeah, very good. I like that was a pretty good little list. You know, intrepid, intrepid subscribers and viewers, go ahead just write what your favorite dog is. And say which one. What say? What was your you favorite dog? The, you can also put it out there. Put favorite dog or cat. Yeah, dog favorite pet. Favorite pet. Put it down in the comments. Yeah. Is there I, any? Are, are there any exotic? animals you'd ever own uh i have a list of exotic animals that people own oh let's go hey let's go over it then <laughs> uh we'll do the top 10 okay uh number 10 starting with the spotted jinnet what is that uh it's a parent's drawing comparisons from a ferret <clears throat> cause them from being mistaken for playful, affectionate animals, but they are rather aloof and highly independent. <laughs> cool. <laughs> They're kind of like a cat with a bushy tail, like a ferret with like a bushy tail. Uh. I always think those kind of like weasels and ferrets kind of stink. I they smell bad. Yeah, number nine is a miniature donkey. That I would own a miniature donkey for sure. They can weigh anywhere from between two hundred to four hundred and fifty pounds. Yeah, that's awesome. Would you ride it if you could? Yeah, if it was big enough. But like, I would, I would dress as, a, I would dress like Shrek, and I would take my donkey everywhere. Go around with your donkey. So, but you would have to have a miniature donkey, or would you take a regular donkey? A miniature donkey. 
Just because Donkey's little. Yeah. Here you go. I uh, feel like uh, that would be the best. He would be my service donkey, and every every comic palooza, every comic con I'd go to, I'd be we'd be Shrek and Donkey. Heck yeah. Your future, uh, your future wife can be Dragon. <clears throat> there you go. No, she'll be have to be Fiona. Oh, I guess yeah. I'll get a cat named Dragon, or I don't know. You gotta get a donkey named the uh, name the dragon. Yeah, there you go. See, number eight is a llama. You can own llama. Oh, I guess I thought they were just like livestock. They use them for uh therapy animals. Huh. I'll be darned. Yeah. This is my seeing eye llama. <laughs> yeah. I think it's more of like a soothing kind of thing. Like, oh, this is Frederick. This is my yeah, like help with PTSD and stuff. Yeah, the next one is called a dick dick. Yeah, you already yeah, get one of them, dude. Yeah, I already get a few of those. Uh, you. Yeah. I don't know if you have. I don't know how to say it, but it's D I K D I K. Okay, I mean dick dick sounds right then. Yeah, a dick dick sweet features and doe eyes make people swoon. And it seems possible for seems being coined as an unsuitable pet makes these miniature antelopes with a questionable name all the more desirable. What do they what do they look like? They're like miniature deer. Huh. Like antelope, I guess. <laughs> and they can be pets? That's pretty rad. I'm gonna start my own zoo. I have a. It'll just be a bunch of dogs. <laughs> <laughs> After the dick dick, next up is the pygmy goat. Very good. We discussed those earlier. Good old pygmy goat. Pygmy goat action. Number five is the bush baby. Hmm. Aren't those ascending sugar gliders or are those different? Uh, they're similar. They they're known as either bush babies or night monkeys. <laughs> nice. So, these saucer-eyed primates are hard to find, purchase, and keep legally, yet not impossible. This makes them a challenge some are more than willing to accept. <laughs> I mean, I guess. Can you, like, my problem with these exotic animals, like, will they actually love you back? I don't know. This one is, like, sleeping in someone's hand. Ah. Huh. I mean, like, I feel like a little donkey would. Like, have the capacity, but, like, like, the dick dick, like, would be like, what the hell, get away from me. Yeah, like, like a little antelope is like, no, thanks. It's like, nah, you might eat me or something. I'm sure if you gave it like a sugar cube or something it could come up to you and you can pet it yeah okay number four is a fawn like actually owning a deer yeah i got like i mean there's a few here we i'll just snoop, scoop one up <laughs> there you go <laughs> springs there upon us i'll just go grab one Famously owned by Audrey Hepburn. Oh, shout out to the lady. Yeah, her four-legged, doe-eyed co-star, Pippin, remains a prime example of the unusual becoming usual. Huh. Word. Number three is a cockroach. No, that's just downright no. <laughs> I will not own them. They will not be in my house. <laughs> not, they, not even they do not have the capacity to love. I can't even say that's a pet. It's just a captive. <laughs> just, she's trying to get out and reproduce. Yeah. It's just like it doesn't want to be around you. You don't really want to be around it. That's a pet you could eat, though. A cockroach? Yeah. No. I won't even do that. 
I eat my dog before I eat a freaking roach, dude. The That's only roaches true. are the, the leftover some blunts, dude. <laughs> Why is that number two? That's number three. Oh, why is that top three of best exotic pets? I think this list is just the most unusual pets ever owned. Oh, I thought those were like the best exotic pets to have or something. No, it's just the most unusual ones. Oh. Well, yeah, if I ever... Hey, you my pet cockroach. I'm going to burn your house down. <laughs> I'm going to just get up and leave. No explanation. Yeah, like I won't be your friend. Like, hey, my pet cockroach. It's like, uh, you also like... Like, did they wheel you in on, like, a stretcher like Hannibal Lecter? And, like, had to remove the mask from your face. <laughs> yeah, like, hey, he's liver with a mask, he empty. So, I think the only acceptable person or thing that could have a roach as a pet is Wally. Yeah. That's it. And that's because it's animated, and that roach has the capacity for love. It's like a little, like, like, it like interacts with Wally. Like there's like there's no roaches out here that are like, hey, come here, let me put you on a leash, walk you around. <laughs> if a roach was giant, it would eat you. Yeah. We are not friends, me and the roaches. I'd be spraying it with lemon all. <laughs> well, roaches uh can run fast. Like the way that they they lo- lo- like locomotive like the way they I'm trying to think of the word like locomotion yeah but like the way they move their legs is like a perfect robot like no that's why like they're just they're they're too evil I don't like roaches Uh, mm -hmm. Roaches are not a fan. Cole's not a fan of roaches. Yeah. Let's see. Next up, we have uh, number two is a sugar glider. Ah. Well, I mean, I could, I could see you having a little scritch on a sugar glider and like carrying it around. Here you go. And number one, the one of the most, I guess, voted the most unusual pet to have is the Fennec Fox. Ah. Let me get this guy up here. I would think I'd own a Fennec Fox. It says, the jury is out on these cute canids. From your family's new best friend to aggressive, impossible to domesticate. While opinions vary, we can all agree that these bat-eared bundles make for undoubtedly wild pets. Okay, I'm glad that, like, a snake wasn't number one. Like, yeah, <laughs> what are you... This is my snake thing. <laughs> this is my... This is my danger noodle nagini. Some people really love their snakes. Good on them. Not me. I'm like too disabled to be like having a snake. They would see my weakness and like yomp me up. <laughs> they would eat you. You'd be a snake snack. Yeah, the snakes would be eating me up. I couldn't. I couldn't like have a snake. I feel like there's like a. I have like a biblical obligation to not trust a snake. That's right. To destroy a snake when you see it. Yeah, under my heel. Yeah. But, you know, more power to the people that like them and own them, but... And, like, I hear they're relatively clean and, like, kind of low-maintenance. And, like, I know a few people that own snakes, but I couldn't do it. Yeah. I... The the arch nemesis to a snake, I would always want to... Not arch nemesis, but, like, snake food. I always wanted to own a rat. Yeah. Like a little rat, a little rat friend. It's like we knew that one guy that had some pet rats. Yeah, then they were pretty cool. <laughs> they could you could train them to be like diabetes alert rats. Yeah, and they like know their names and stuff. Yeah, that's pretty cool. That's rad. 
I was made fun of by somebody who shall remain nameless <laughs> to protect their identity. I was made fun of. For wanting to work at Renfest and own a rat. You wanted to own a rat and work at Renfest. You know, hey, it's good to have goals. I have like a long trench coat and like a rat tail in my hair. Yeah. Know some street magic. <laughs> Oh man, it's getting late. Yeah. Well, dang, dude. We definitely have discussed pets. Yeah. How long has our runtime been? What are we? I don't, I have no idea actually. What time is it now? We can just start uh, wrapping it up. Nine oh two. Oh yeah, we we can wrap it up. We can just talk about music, and then call it a night. All right. Sure. What's going on in the music world? Oh, um, since our last episode, Hozier put out the Unheard EP, which is pretty good. Uh, have you listened to it? I have listened to it. Yeah? Do you, what's your favorite song? Uh, I don't really have one. They all rank equally to me. <laughs> okay. I like Wild Wildflowers and Barley. It's pretty good. There we go. Um, I love an Irish tune. Yeah, that's pretty good. Um... Now, Glass Animals is putting out a a single on Wednesday of next week, and I hope it April is, 3rd. will come. With, yeah, come with an announcement of a new album, and hopefully a new tour eventually once they release the new album, so that Kyle and I, our intrepid host with the most, um. We can go to their concert again and get accessibility seating and be closer this time. That's right. We're we're we're, we're going to speak it into the universe now for all of our viewers. Meet yeah, us at the put, Class Animals concert. Yeah, we'll we'll keep y'all posted. Their new yeah. song is going to be Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy themed. Very good. Space themed. I love that. We love to see it. Um, Baby No Money rapper, uh, has made a song with Smosh. Oh, good for them. Yeah. Yeah, Smosh is back, so. Yeah, Smosh is back. I think it's a song about being a simp. <laughs> that bad track. Like, being breedable and. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds right. That sounds right. It sounds right on the money for Baby No Money. Yeah, very much um any other big music things you've been listening to uh not really i saw um uh young gravy posted a picture of him being dressed like a cowboy yeah oh well, and also he found a dog so very topical he yeah. has a i forget the dog's name but like he just found him in a dumpster i was like this is my dog <laughs> that's courage yeah <laughs> That dog's going to want for nothing. Well, dang, dude. Got any Lucky's pool hall for us? Let me pull it up here. See what I got. Do, 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 do. Waiting on Lucky's pool hall. Uh, let's see. Lucky's Pool Hall, sponsored by a Heath Bar in your cavity. Ouch, Heath Bar. And now offering Scottish Spring Pepper Spray Scented Soap. Yummy. Uh, brought to you by Head and Shoulders, but your boyfriend will use it for his ass. And cigarettes have more butt than your girlfriend. Dang, dude. Savage. There we go. <laughs> well thank you everybody remember to like comment subscribe comment below all the things we told you to comment write it uh, send send in all your lovely emails to the podcast email and uh yeah appreciate it y'all peace bye